Agency in Motion Continuing Education Series. This is a series specifically designed for agents, producers, advisors, and agency builders in the financial services industry. Today's episode centers around front loading your business. One of the most important things that you can learn is to get a massive amount of traffic coming through your business infrastructure, your online assets. And once you learn to do that, and once you learn to develop a persona of a person that you are looking to do business with, um, this business becomes a lot easier because you're just sorting at that point. So front loading your business is what we're going to be talking about today. Once you understand that, it becomes very easy, like I said, to sort because at the top of this, you've got data coming in and that data is going to be whittled down into interested party. Those interested parties are general interest. Those become leads through the process of what we do. Uh, we create more uh, specific interests that leads to meetings, that leads to outcomes, um, that leads to growth in your business, your book, your agency, whatever it is that you're trying to do. So understand everything that you're doing for your business should be looked upon uh, as like a digital factory pipeline. So once you understand kind of how the data creates the leads, create the book meetings, then you need to understand where your leads are actually coming from. You need to know the sources of your leads, what you're expecting from those sources, and the actual results to figure out, hey, is this lead source working? If great, go back to it continuously until it doesn't. Is this lead source not working? Is there something I need to tweak? Is there something I need to find uh, that's a new source? And once again, you can't have a one-legged stool. Just like we talk about our clients with retirement, you can't have a one-legged marketing stool. You have to have different sources of marketing uh, that give you different results. And then like finally tuning that stuff, understanding what's working and what's not is how you're going to grow, build, and scale your business. Like I said, look at your business as a digital factory. And when you understand your business as a digital factory, then you're just identifying areas in your factory that you can improve. And then through micro improvements, you've got an overall macro improvement. So understand that the digital factory breaks down. Really for us, you're bringing in raw material. This is lead generation, the stages of production, you know, whether they're completing surveys, booking meetings, you know, opting out, whatever it might be, that's creating what we call in products. And then Inside your digital factory, what you need to bring along with some organization is some grit because setting up a factory, getting a factory to the point where it's producing, it's efficient, it's flowing, everything you want is going to take some time, energy, resources, just like anything else. And if you give up along the way, your factory is going to shut down. Our factory pipeline, our, our factory pipeline is based upon appointments. What do we want? We want to sit down with people uh, who are in our persona, who are looking for our help, who are able, willing, and wanting to do business with us. So our outcomes are going to come from appointments. So everything that we try to do is about getting those book meetings on our calendar, filling up that calendar, getting rid of that white space on our calendar so we have enough appointments so that we don't value any one appointment uh, too much. If you have enough coming in on lead generation, if you have enough book meetings, you're not going to put value on any one. You're going to understand it's a process. And once you do that, it becomes a lot easier uh, to make data-driven decisions once again over those emotional ones. That appointment funnel creates a sales pipeline. So once you put it all together, it's easy to understand how to make money, how to make revenue, and how to improve upon those metrics inside your appointment funnel, inside your sales pipeline. So how do you win? You win by front loading your business, but you need to understand there's no limits. So you have to understand if you're solving a big problem and you have legitimate solutions um, and you have the infrastructure to create your digital factory pipeline that creates a sales pipeline that creates outcomes, all you have to do is go all in. There are no limits. This is a huge industry. This is a huge opportunity. Um, you just need to go all in. And when you do understand there are no limits, this is an incredible lucrative opportunity if you know what you're doing. So what are you doing? Well, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Your personal plan from that appointment funnel and sales pipeline is to book 12 to 15 appointments per week. Nothing's changed. That's always been our metric, whether you are 
you know, doing online advertising, you're doing mailers, whatever it is that you're doing, your goal is to have 12 to 15 appointments per week. Now, that isn't random appointments with random people having random conversations. What is an appointment? That's someone with a reason to do something. Once again, this goes all the way back to identifying a persona of who we're looking for. Once you have that persona and you front load your business with that persona, this becomes very, very easy to make money, help people, and have fun. You really want to create, you know, if you're building a book of business, you know, three clients, you know, a, a month, if you're doing it correctly, we'll get things going. If you are building agencies, it needs to be a three by three metric, which you're bringing in three direct clients and three direct partners per month. That will get the wheels turning on the agency build out. And once again, if you go forward and you're not upholding your end of the bargain, that three by three on an agency build out your whole other growth metrics are going to fall short. You have to consistently do what you need to do and uphold your end of the bargain, not only for the numbers side, but also people are going to be looking at you and you're either going to lead by example or lead by lack of example. And then once you have people come in, one of the most important things that you can learn if you're building agencies, yes, you're going to front load your business, but as you have partners coming in, the good partners that you feel confident about that have made that commitment that you guys are working well, you know, they're going to come in. But once you identify that key partner, what you want to do is you want to lock them in with ownership. Why do people stick around? They stick around because they've got something to lose if they leave. Lock the good ones in with ownership. You're going to get to a point, you know, if you're building agencies where you don't need a lot of people under you, your job is to help build agencies. And one of those things is to identify talent work with that talent and lock that talent in with ownership. Going back to front loading your business, it really comes back to one of the key parts of our activity that we have to do every single day. And that's in the contact world. You have to be in the contact business. You have to be contacting people, whether it's direct marketing, whether it's networking, just learn to talk about your business in a way it's not me, 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 me. We've talked about this before. You need to learn how to talk about your business in a way that shows interest in other people first, and that actually builds interest in what you're doing. Every single day, guys, the contact business part of online, you have to build your audience every single day. Continue to get more and more people around you inside your audience, and every single day, you need to engage with your audience. Step one and step two of the actions has to be done every day. Step three is an opportune step. So at the right time, at the right place, the right moment, the right information, you're gonna sell your audience because at any given day, somebody might be looking for something, somebody might not be looking for something and that might switch you know, a week, a month, two months later. So build your audience and engage your audience every single day. You're engaging your audience with education, with entertainment, stuff they wanna see. Uh, so they look forward to hearing from you online. And then at the opportune time, like I said, sell your audience with the right moments. You've got every day, you've got stuff to do. you got a to-do list, you've got your CRM activity, you've got specific calendar meetings. You need to automate whatever you can and you need to make sure that you tier the other activity. Front-loading your business is extremely important. But once you front-load your business, you have to tier that activity. You want to do the most uncomfortable stuff at the top that stuff that you want to do is the stuff that you need to do the most. So tier your activity that way, you're getting the most important things done uh, on a weekly, uh, daily, and monthly basis. One of the other things that you can understand is by getting organized and by front-loading your business, you're going to have a ton of cycles of communication. A lot of times what people tell me is they're not getting referrals because they're forgetting or they don't know how to ask for referrals. If you got enough people coming through your business and you're helping out enough people, you should have a line of referrals because why? Most people ask for referrals too soon. And then in the insurance, the money game, financial services, whatever you want to call it, it's tough to get referrals. But when you establish and provide value and that value has been recognized, then you ask for the referral. Who else do you know and care about that needs to know this information? Why am I bringing this up on this episode today? Because when you front load your business, that is an important part of the cycles of communication. But you need to understand that if you're not doing things because it's not being remembered in the process of doing the things that you do every day, 
that you need to do stuff like have a closing the sale checklist, have a new hire checklist, and make sure you're going through those things so that something doesn't get skipped over. You need a list of things. You need a checklist to make sure the new hires are coming through, the new clients are coming through, they're getting serviced, and also you're not forgetting to do those things like get the referrals. Your client relationships, and we talk about this so much, is an ongoing relationship. It's an ongoing project. You're not just selling somebody a financial product, closing the sale, and never talking to them again. The more you work with somebody, the more you help these people stay on track and stay accountable, the more value you're going to be able to extract from that relationship, including ongoing referrals. We get a ton of referral business. People are calling me up. Hey, so-and-so said to call you to help you move money to this or that. If you have healthy ongoing relationships with your client, this will happen. If your clients really, you're not in contact with your clients, that's not going to happen. Be available, send stuff out, be that person that is creating that healthy relationship. So back to front loading your business. The communication plan is the end-to-end -end plan for delivering strategic messages to key audiences in order to drive positive business outcomes, drive those lead generation, drive those appointment uh, you know, bookings. You need to understand the front of your business. If you're front loading your business, you need to understand the value of helping people understand why your organization does what it does. And we always talk about this. Most of the people out there, everybody you can talk to, they know what they do. Uh, most people know how they do it. Very few people know why they do it. So especially the younger generation, they are very mission-based. They're going to buy into your mission first. So you need to talk about your why, talk about your mission, talk about what's driving us as an organization, as well as driving you as a person to do what you do. People are going to buy into your why, buy into you, make sure you're crafting that skill set and making sure you're good at that. You need to start conversations. You're never going to front load your business if you don't learn how to open your mouth. And once again, this is not hard. We kind of parallel this to a blind date. When you're out there, if you're not direct marketing and you're just networking, what do you do? That's great. How long have you done it? Do you like it? Just ask questions. The more questions you ask, the more time you let the other person speak, it's going to uncover what we always want you to uncover, which is information. You need to stop selling and start interviewing. And when you do this, when you get good at this process, this whole business build out becomes a lot easier because you can increase the flow of your pipeline. You can front load your business by learning how to build trust, credibility, and rapport, whether that's online or whether that's in the first few meet minutes of meeting somebody. That's going to allow them to really feel comfortable talking to you. And when they talk, you've got to listen. And then not only listening, but also listening for the purpose of having them continue. If they're getting to motivating factors or pain points, don't just gloss over, hey, tell me more about that. Can you go into more detail about that? Because that information uncovers a problem that you can now come in with a solution and action step. You can't just come in with an action step if you haven't uncovered a problem. You can't uncover a problem unless you let them talk and give the information. So this is a great pyramid to understand, study, and master to increase the flow of your pipeline. This old school sell me this pen mentality and approach doesn't work anymore. What you have to understand is you have to get in the marketplace and front load your business with value, value-based propositions, giveaway, education, teaching people to do the things or giving them the information material to teach them to do the things they want. And once again, if you're dialed into persona and you're giving away information that's pertinent to that persona, it's going to have them raise their hand and say, hey, can we talk more about this? Your business becomes a lot easier. It's really about, hey, look, check this out, because when you're in the marketplace, you have strangers. These are prospects. They're going to a website, some type of infrastructure online. They become a website visitor. You've got some value-based proposition, guide, education, webinars, savings reports, whatever it might be. They fill out the form. They become a lead. This whole process, you guys, is something that you need to understand we've developed an ecosystem for our business and you need to understand the difference between a landing page and a funnel. So a landing page is more of a linear, you know, 
event. Basically, what happens is somebody goes to your landing page, they want something, they put in their contact information, it creates a lead, it's done. You have to follow up that lead, you have to get them more information. The funnel system is actually an ecosystem that's, you know, it's like almost like a living organism. It's got a lot of things happening in there. So once somebody comes to a page, puts their contact information in, it's a live lead. And it's going to go through a many, many different parts. And we're going to go through this to make sure you guys understand whether it's email, social, blog, telephone call, text, whatever it is, people are going to a landing page with a form. If the value proposition for that form is good enough, they're going to enter in their contact information. The offer is given and the lead is generated. Now you have a lead, you have someone to talk to, you have something to talk to them about. You have to understand at the top of the funnel, you're creating attention um, and you're like educating, creating awareness that creates interest. And then through the funnel operation, we have desire and action points. Your marketing funnels work if you work them. You need to understand, you need to know your numbers because small changes in conversions on the front side can mean big, meaningful changes to conversion on the back side. You need to understand what you're looking for. Conversions can be measured from different metrics, but calendar appointments is really what we look for. And that's a good leading indicator. So we use that. So out of the conversions come in, out of the leads that come in um, your funnel, how many are converting? How many people who entered your funnel convert into customers. Once you know that, it's a lot easier to understand what's happening, where they're falling off, what's working and what's not working, uh, to once again, continue to just refine and implement ways to make your business better. You got to educate the customer on the front side. And that's exactly what we do. So we create content, we create information, we create uh, lead magnets that get people interested in learning more. That lead magnet is going to attract people into creating lead generations. And the easiest way to understand what a lead magnet is, is this is what you need to become great at with the approach and language. Hey, you are X, here's Y. You're an insurance agent. Here's a guide on selling more insurance and making more money. You're a homeowner. Here's a guide on paying off the mortgage in a fraction of the time without changing your loan lifestyle or your budget. So you are X, here's Y that can help you. And once again, if you're dialed into your persona, you know what that persona is, you know what your message is, you know where to find that persona, it's a lot easier to get this business built. Remember that lead magnet is going to attract people. You have to attract the right types of people because it goes back to our book meetings. We're not looking to have just a bunch of book meetings, work really hard, random conversations with random people. We want to work smart, dial into our personas. So if people are booking meetings, we're, um, they're in our persona and they're able, willing, and wanting to do business with us. So people need to know, right? That's the factual information that we're leading with. Hey, you need to know how to do this. You need to know how to do this, whether it's partner recruitment, whether it's client attraction, this is the how-to, whether it's the education, the guides, we're leading with this stuff to create lead generation, and that's the opt-in. And the opt-in does everything. It gets the wheels in motion. When you're talking about an opt-in for you know, education, one-on-one, -on -one, webinar guides, whatever it might be, First of all, you need to understand what you're giving away. You need to understand how to talk about it. Don't be giving guides away if you've never cracked open the guide and even looked at it. Because the more you understand what you're giving away, the easier it is to be excited about giving away, uh, talk about the giveaway, and the importance of the giveaway. The opt-in is going to open the gates. And once the opt-in happens, you guys, there's additional pages inside the marketing funnel. And that means additional ways to get information and additional opportunities. And that's surveys, forms, calendar access, whatever it might be. So once they opt in and create the lead, they're going to have access to additional information and opportunities through the funnel. And that really kicks off a number of different things. So when you look at opt-ins coming into your business, which is really lead generation forms and lead creation, you want it to look like this. You want to drive as much traffic as long as they're dialed into the correct persona. You want to drive as much persona traffic as possible uh, into your business because that traffic is going to opt in. And that opt in is going to create different cycles of communications. So whereas you have all the people coming into your business, once they opt in, you know, some of these people could be opting out. Some of these people could be booking meetings. Some of these people could be filling out surveys, whatever it is. Now you've got one lane of traffic that you've got going into your infrastructure. 
now separating into many different lanes, depending on what's being sent out and what actions taken from the other side. Between the campaigns and the triggers, like I said, that's the ecosystem. And that's gonna continually, even without your manual efforts, automatically getting in front of them with additional information and automatically moving them through the digital factory pipeline depending on what action steps they took. There's a ton of automation between these two that are gonna help you with your business. Your campaigns are automated series. There's multiple attempts, there's multiple channels that's designed to really do one of two things, drive them out, opt out, or drive them into calendar appointments, whether that's one-on-one -on -one education or webinar format. And we're reaching them by email, text messages, ringless voicemails. These are designed to get in front of your prospects or your leads and their desired method of communication and allow them to respond back in their desired method of communication. And then the triggers are gonna help you. Like I said, if you have a digital factory pipeline, you're trying to move people through that pipeline. If they take an action step on their side, we've got triggers built in, basically cause and effect. If they take this action, the system will do this. So there's a lot of automation in here, allowing you to free up your time and really concentrate on the important stuff, which is income producing activities, sometimes the calls can have multiple effects. So sometimes if your lead or your prospect takes action inside the system, whatever action they've taken has got three different effects and the triggers will go ahead and not only move them in the factory pipeline, alert you to the fact, take care of a lot of the stuff. It's almost like having a kind of like a secretary or you know multiple secretaries handling stuff for you. Basically, like I said, the triggers are, if this happens, do this. And we've got a lot of different triggers, whether they opt in, whether they're replying to stuff that we're sending out, whether they're completing surveys, booking meetings or webinars, canceling, not showing up, unsubscribing, stopping. Um, you know, this system that we have will take care of all that automatically and alert you to the fact of what's going on. Get good at giving away the giveaway. This is one of the most important things. That front end giveaway, if you look at the back end results, it's going to create book meetings. Those book meetings are the presentations. That's allowing you to do your discovery, to educate the client, to lead them into a buying decision that is going to create revenue and income for you, but also they're not being sold. They've decided to buy. They're excited about the process of working with you. They're excited about your products and services. They're excited about what's been designed as a legit pathway to get them to their desired in uh, financial outcomes. Those online meetings, you have to be on point. Whether you're paying for marketing, creating organic marketing, it all leads down to the online meeting. You do a good job on the lead generation, a good job of creating meetings out of this, but you suck at your meetings everything's gonna fall short. You have to make sure you're on point for this and that you're presenting your presentation, you're educating, you're doing the discovery. Remember, this may be the two or 300th time you've done this. It's the first time that the other side's seeing it. So you need to come on point and you need to learn how to present your presentation in a way because if you get good at this entire process of creating leads, creating appointments, you know, presenting your presentation and creating outcomes, you know, sometimes clients come out of this, sometimes partners, sometimes nothing. But if you know your numbers and if you use your infrastructure and if you get good at the education process, you're going to have a lot of positive outcomes. And that positive outcomes will create revenue and income for yourself, whether you're building a book of business or create revenue and income for your agency if you're trying to create distribution. The whole process of land to expand. You identify a problem, you get a commitment to solve that problem, and then you usher in the solutions. You're going from awareness to education, to selecting, to onboarding, to use, to expansion. This is really you know, the process of understanding how to take somebody coming in with their problems, getting a solution, getting a commitment, and then once they see that solution start to evolve right in front of them and they're excited about that, then we move on to the referrals. Learn, practice, improve. Don't just think that where you are right now is good enough. You need to continuously improve practice and learn this business because if you're not adopting infrastructure, if you're not adopting technology, if you're not trying to get ahead of other people, trust me, they're trying to get ahead of you. And this is external competition 
and then internal competition as well. You have to beat yourself and beat the others around you if you want to be successful. Your level of effort is going to be something that is going to determine, you know, what standard of living you attain, what retirement you attain, what business outcomes you attain. It's really, really important that you understand the level of effort. If you have your infrastructure in place and you have everything dialed in, what you bring to the table every day, energy, intensity, attention, you know, all of these things, it's the level of effort. So once you have your business model in place, you got to bring the energy, intensity, and level of effort. Agency in Motion, uh, continuing education series on building, managing, and operating agencies in the 21st century.